If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're going to start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes. And that would be two layers, so we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z in the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I have selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on this drop down. Click on the corner. Click on the next. Hold the space bar. Pan down. Click on the bottom right corner. And then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again. Click and drag. Pan up. And complete that path. You can see it. There it is. Red. What I'm going to do now is enable the layer for the snow border. I'm going to click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also going to double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Ctrl J, Command J and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt, G, Command, Option, G, Command. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold pull. Option the Mac, click and drag. Refine that selection just a little bit more. around the snow border. I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. And I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask that we need to so so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into the window, properties, click on mask edge, and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So we keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone but we don't lose any that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair and hopefully we'll get a better selection. So now, I didn't do that good of a job here, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm going to press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. I'm 
which swaps the foreground and background color from the black on the paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not going to take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just going to go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. Here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see in this screen will be selected and anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well and press OK. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool and select black as my foreground color so I can paint it black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket tool. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And I'm just painting these pixels away, which represent floor. And once again, I'm going to go into image, adjustment, levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid tones a little bit. And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm going to press Control. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, command to the back, transform, we can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, command 0 on the back, there's the corner handles. And now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose flip horizontal just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press the V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this no layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white on this layer mask start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use a bracket piece in the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white and bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black. work with different elements, so I'm going to open up the libraries panel, and I'm going to open up this file here, which is the snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So, what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press control C. I'm going to deselect that element, control D, command D on the Mac, go back into the file. 
file that we're working with, I'm going to paste it here, control V, command DMX, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen, so the black text will disappear, and we only see the white pixels, in this case, just now. Then I'm going to press control T, command T to transform, control zero, command zero for bird's eye view, and I'm going to scale this element. I'm going to press Ctrl-0, Command-0 again, to zoom back in, and I'm going to just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm going to flip it horizontally, so right click on it, flip horizontally, and keep rotating it, so maybe something, something like this. And I, I can you know, scale it more if I need to, or rotate it more if I need to, so whatever distortions I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. And I'm going to press V to select the move tool. And I'm going to move it around just to fit it into this section. So maybe something like this. And actually, I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element is cut up right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here in the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here and click on crop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadow. So the shadows will be on the left side. I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously, that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm going to do now is right above this snow element here, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm just going to paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the eyedropper tool, select that color, and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light. Something like that and just continue that shadow coming up the board. And actually, let me drag this layer up on top of the group. Just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Every so often I do a search for that hashtag, and if I find your image, I'll leave a comment. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it, and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoyed the tutorial, don't forget to click that like button, and share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Photoshop Painting channel now. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.